All right, here we've got all the amplifiers with their covers taken off. I'll give you kind of close-up view of each one. So, starting with the first amp that we actually tested, um, this one is the Kinter K3118. Has the Texas Instruments chip on it. All right, there it should be in focus. So this chip is just in the center, um, doesn't actually have a heat sink on it, but it doesn't get really warm in testing or playing music on it for a while or anything. Um, the one thing about this amplifier is it does have a noticeable pop, mainly when you turn off the, the system. When you turn it on, um, not really too much of a pop there, but that's just one of those things that's a little on the cheaper side. Sound quality on it is, I would say it's excellent. Um, Moving over here to the TriPath version, this is the Kinter K2020A+, the TriPath limited edition. You can see the internals on this. Um, there's actually relays for the speakers, those two orangey yellow boxes. Um, you still get a turn on or turn off pop on this one as well. Um, probably not as bad as the other one, but it's still there. When I first got these two amps, I was comparing them. Um, the, the one with the TI chip, the first one, is currently $20 on Amazon. This one's a little over $30 on Amazon. But I thought that this one did have better sound quality to it. Um, you could hear into the music a little more, more detailed, vocal sound more natural and realistic. Um, so this is the one that I'm gonna keep. I'm happy with that one. Um, this one I just received, haven't really had any other testing done with it except this test here. This is also the TriPath 2020 chip. Um, similar design amp board to the Kinter, a little different. Sound Sounds a little different. Um, it has a relay for the speaker outputs as well. I believe this one had a little bit of a pop, but probably better than the other two Kinters. Not really something to concern yourself with. Um, also on all of these amps, it has tone controls and a tone bypass switch. The front panels are nearly identical between them. And on all of this testing, the tone controls were bypassed. It sounds best that way. I mean, you could add a little more bass or treble to it, but I think it's at the sacrifice of the overall fullness and detail of the sound. So this is the Live Pin LP2020A+. And then the next one here is the Breeze Audio, which has the Texas Instruments TPA3116 chip, which um, according to the specs is more powerful than the TriPath or the other Texas Instruments chip. Um, you know, in practice, there's not a whole lot of difference. It might sound a little bit less stressed at a higher volume, but when I was testing for the um, one volt output, this one had to be almost nearly all the way up whereas the other ones were maybe three quarters of the way up, a little over halfway on some of them. But, you know, then again, uh, the big Insignia receiver, which is this here, also had to be considerably high. It's, I think the max range is a 62 or 64 on the numbers, and it had to be like 49 or so on the volume dial. dial. So like three quarters of the way up or so. And this is a a real amp, it's not a chip amp. You can see the output transistors here on the big heat sink inside. Large power transformer, power supply. This one also has Bluetooth built in. Uh, Price-wise, it's a Best Buy exclusive product. It's their brand. Um, you want to check their website to see the current pricing. I believe it's somewhere around $100 or $120. Sometimes it goes on sale, but um, this one's very versatile. You know, this this is not a like an unregulated Chinese product, so this one will be um, safer, I would say. You know, it's fused, it's underwriter laboratories tests it, it's sold here in the US, it's not like a direct import from China like all of the other amps. 
So safety wise, reliability wise, um, probably even quality wise, quality of sound, this would be the best bet. But as you can see, it takes up a lot more space. Um, it's a lot heavier and it does cost considerably more. But I know that these are usually the options people are considering for things like outdoor speakers or your garage sound system, uh, small systems in a second bedroom, things like that. Um, you can't really go wrong with these Kinter amplifiers. They're available readily available on Amazon. Um, you know, if you're looking to just spend the least amount of money possible, get the Kinter K3118. It's $20. It includes a power supply. Um, not quite sure why this one, aside from the speaker popping, isn't really just outselling everything else on Amazon in terms of the small amps because the other brands are just using that same chip. Um, it comes with a three amp power supply. Um, during this testing, I actually used the power supply for the TriPath amp from Kinter, which is a five amp power supply. I just wanted these three to kind of be on a level playing field in terms of the power supply used. Um, so I used the five amp power supply that was included with the Kinter. And again, for $10 more, you do get a better power supply and I believe you get a better amplifier. The, the tone on it, the detail on it, um, I would say is, is the best amongst these um, small amplifiers. The Breeze Audio, that was an eBay purchase. I can't really remember how much I spent, maybe $30 or $25 even, I don't know. Um, do, does not come with a power supply, so you have to use maybe a laptop power supply. It's rated to handle 24 volts, but these, or yeah, but the capacitors in it are only 25 volts, so you're safer with maybe a 19 volt computer power supply, which is what I'm using, so that you're not um, at the limit of those capacitors inside there, which there's various videos on YouTube of them like popping basically. And again, this one sparks when you plug it in, like I showed. So, uh, you know, it's just the capacitors charging up. It's not really a concern. I've been using it for probably six months or longer, and it's been okay. But, you know, again, safety-wise, not worrying about it, spending more money insignia. Uh, sound quality um, in these small amps, the Kinter, the Lev Pin, they're probably about the same, but the Kinter you could readily purchase. And the lesser price Kinter, the 3118, that would be the best bargain, $20. I don't see anything else for $20 that's going to sound as good. So there's my video. Thanks for watching. Almost forgot to show the speakers that I was using. Um, these are energy loudspeakers. Um, you know, again, bought these for the garage and they sound great. Um, I would say that they sound probably better than most um, speakers that people would consider using in the house. Um, they're used on eBay. I paid maybe $55. And there's the model number, uh, made in Canada. High quality tweeter, um, woofer sounds great, it's a ported enclosure. And uh, yeah, I couldn't be happier with those, especially for the price paid. You may find similar items on Craigslist or eBay from time to time. But um, yeah, I definitely recommend these versus a lot of the new stuff out there that you'll end up spending more money on. A lot of nice detail coming out of these, nice imaging. Thanks again.